Shaddai, O Nishnu God, Ponamam Supadi Praj, Kacharja, Ashto, Turisit Sri Srimad, AC Bhakti Vedanta Shami Miraj, Prabhupada Dikhi Jai, Ananta Koti Vaishnava Nikhi Jai, Nama Charja Sri Dharidas Thakur Ki Jai, Rame Sakaho Sri Krishna Chaitana, Prabhu Nitaranda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasadi, Gaur Bhakti Vrindiki Jai, Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopinath, Shama Kun Radha Kun Kiri Kavritan Ki Jai, Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai, Navadip Tham Ki Jai, Jagannath Puri Ki Jai, Ganga Mai Ki Jai, Jamana Mai Ki Jai, Tusi Devi Ki Jai, Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Samaveda Bhakti Vrindiki Jai, all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. Go Premanan Day. To Tukahantri, to Mina, to all the devotees. We're continuing on Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Lila, chapter 2, and the verse is, we're in the middle of the purport to 191. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Namo Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhaktushta Aminati Nami Gauravani Pracharane Nirvise Sushunya Bhadi Pashpata Deshata Om Gyan Timirandhasya Kinanjana Shalakaya Chakshur Militam Jaina Tasmai Sri Buddha Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Jaina Bhutale Shayam Rupa Kadam Raisyam Tatati Shapatantikam Pandeham Sri Guru Sri Jatapadakamana Sri Guru Vaishnavamstra Sri Rupam Shagru Shahaban Atam Vitam Satsajiva Sadvaitam Sadvatutam Krishna Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Shahagana Lalita Sri Vishakan Vitaastra E Krishna Kurna Sindhau Dhevan Jodhikartate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kams Radha Ante Vrindavan Holy Priya, Vansha Gop Dhrubhyascha Prabha Sindho Pye Vajra, Patita Nam Bhavanevyo Vaishnavivyo Namaha, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vashali Gaur Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Nama Rama. The Kaviraj Goswami has been explaining the second verse of Chaitanya Charitamrita. Vande uh, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Nitananda Sahodito Gorodiye Pushpavanto Chitro Shando Tamonindo. I offer my respectful obeisances unto Shri Krishna Chaitanya and Lord Nitananda who are like the sun and moon. They have arisen simultaneously on the horizon of Goda to dissipate the darkness of ignorance and thus wonderfully bestow benediction upon all. So Kaviraj Goswami has been elucidating what this ignorance is. And in this Regard, he's quoted the verse, Dharma Projita Koita Vocha, uh, from 
Srimad Bhagavatam, also the second verse. And regarding uh, cheating or pretentious religiosity. So Srila Prabhupada is continuing in the purport. Bhagavat Dharma, or the religious principle described in Srimad Bhagavatam, of which Bhagavad Gita is a preliminary study, is meant for liberated persons of the highest order, who attribute very little value to the sense gratification of pretentious religiosity. The first and foremost concern of fruitive workers, elevationists, empiric philosophers, and salvationists is to raise their material position. But devotees of Godhead have no such selfish desires. They serve the Supreme Lord only action. Sri Arjun, wanting to satisfy his senses by becoming a so-called nonviolent and pious man, at first decided not to fight. But when he was fully situated in the principles of Bhagavad Dharma, culminating in complete surrender unto the will of the Supreme Lord, he changed his decision and agreed to fight for the satisfaction of the Lord. He then said, Nashto moha smitir labdha tvat prasad armaya chuta sthitosmi gata sandeha koreshe vachanam tava. My dear Krishna, O oh infallible one, my illusion is now gone. I have regained my memory by your mercy. I am now firm and free from doubt and am prepared to act according to your instructions. It is the constitutional position of the living entity to be situated in this pure consciousness. Any so-called religious process that interferes with this unadulterated spiritual position of the living being must therefore be considered a pretentious process of religiosity. A wonderful set with this unadulterated spiritual position of the living being. Anything that gets in the way of Krishna consciousness, anything that obstructs pure devotional service to the Lord, uh, any religious process that does that has to be considered mm, quite a cheating or a pretentious process. Whether it's a process of mm, pious activities or merging with the absolute, it's considered cheating. Let's switch eyes here. The real form of religion is spontaneous loving service to Godhead. This relationship of the living being with the absolute personality of Godhead in service is eternal. The personality of Godhead is described as vastu, or the substance, and the living entities are described as vastavas, or the innumerable samples of the substance in relative existence. The relationship of these substance, substantive portions with the supreme substance can never be annihilated, for it is an eternal quality inherent in the living being. Vedyam uh, vastavam 
atra vastu shiva. So the Lord is substantial, the living entities are substantial, and there's a substantial spontaneous relationship between them, which Prabhupada said is inherent in the living being. By contact with material nature, the living entities exhibit varied symptoms of the disease of material consciousness. To cure this material disease is the supreme object of human life. The process that treats this disease is called Pagva Dharma or Sanatana Dharma, real religion. This is described in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. Therefore, anyone who, because of his background of pious activities in previous lives, is anxious to hear Srimad Bhagavatam, immediately realizes the presence of the Supreme Lord within the heart and fulfills the mission of life. Sadhyo Hridyu Avarudyate Shrikativi. Any comments or questions here? Maharaj? Yes. I thought it was interesting that he, Prabhupada, says um, that the um, that the relationship of the substance substantive portions with the supreme substance can never be annihilated for it is an eternal quality inherent in the living being. And um, it makes me wonder, you know, is the relationship being spoken of here some sort of generic relationship? Uh, or, is he talk or, or is he talking about an actual relationship like what we refer to when we talk about Russes? Yeah, one might indeed wonder that way. Um, certainly a, a general relationship, but it's Hard to, you know, how do people have a general relationship with one another? But, yeah, I don't get um, it either. <laughs> but that's rather a coming at things from sort of a um, linguistic angle. And mm -hmm. I don't know how much we should, weight we should give to that. Mm -hmm. But just coming at things from another direction, Srila Prabhupada clearly taught that a particular relationship with Krishna is inherent in every living being. But that's, um, we don't have to go into that, uh, into the, wade into those waters today, I hope. I will not wade farther. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Yes? No? Saraswati has a question. Saraswati has a question. Oh, I see. I don't have my chat turned on. That's pretty stupid. Um, let me get back to where I'm supposed to be and turn on the chat box. One person, Sarasati says, told me that Arjuna can surrender because Krishna personally spoke to him. We cannot. Well, that one person is not very uh, to the point. Uh, Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> and what's the use of Bhagavad Gita, recording Bhagavad Gita if only Arjun could surrender? What's the point? Why should Vyasadeva write this down? The, the history of the only person who could surrender to Krishna. That's really a foolish proposition. He's writing it down because the instruction is meant for everyone. And the instruction received through the disciplic succession has full potency. Uh, Prabhupada addresses that in, in Bhagavad Gita as it is that even today we can have the same benefit that Arjun got by hearing through the proper channel. Uh, otherwise, really Bhagavad Gita would be a useless book would be a book of uh, telling about uh, instructions we can't follow for results we can't achieve. It's a, a senseless proposition. Yes, Tulsi Priya. Maharaj, isn't it also the case that Arjuna really knew everything that Krishna told him? He was just put into illusion 
so that he could be the, you know, the example for all of us. That's also true. That's also true. Okay. I mean, Krishna could have just said fight and that would have been enough, right? <laughs> he deliberately put Arjuna in, into illusion so that Bhagavad Gita could be spoken for our benefit. Yes. A Kendra Prabhu. Thank you, Maharaj. I was thinking Prabhupada's use, not only Prabhupada's use, but the, he's equating Kaitabha Dharma with, he's using the word pretentious to describe mm. that. And uh, not wanting to go in too much of a, a linguistic angle mm. again, but it seems like his meaning of pretentious is more like it's the, it's it's a pretense. It's not the real thing. It's not honest. It's not it's something other than what it needs to be for the living entity to really um, be truly said to be acting according to dharma. Whereas typically pretentious in in English usage has a different kind of meaning. Is that correct? Mm. Yeah, I think so. Um... Prabhupada seems to, well, it has, it does have the meaning of, of showy, of course. Um, and I think that's part of what Prabhupada has in mind, making a show of, of religion. Um, the, yeah, make, making a show. And, and also, I think, uh, pretending, essentially. Um, Yeah, I was just looking at what pretentious means according to the various dictionaries, but um, yeah, showy, making a claim to great merit or importance, especially when unwarranted. So the, the salvationists, the mm, elevationists and so on, they make, a, they make claims to, to religion but it's, uh, they're unwarranted claims. They're uh, pretending, yeah, really, they're pretending to be religious. But in fact, they're not, they're missing the point of real religion or in the purport, obstructing. They're getting in the way of actual religious activities. Um, yeah. Does that speak to what you had in mind? Oh, yes, so much. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes. Dharma je moksha bansha koitava pradhan jaha hoite krishna bhakti hoi antardhan the foremost process of cheating, tar um, madhye, among all these different cheating processes, uh, moksha vamsha, uh, koitava pradhan, the pradhan koitava, biggest cheating is the desire to achieve liberation by merging into the Supreme. For this causes the permanent disappearance of loving service to Krishna. Jaha hoite Krishna bhakti hoi antirtan. Antirtan means disappearance. And Prabhupada says permanent disappearance. That's the benefit of your eternal liberation. You become uh, permanently mm, excluded from loving service to Krishna. Purport, the desire to merge into the impersonal Brahma is the subtlest type of atheism. As soon as such atheism disguised in the dress of liberation is encouraged, one becomes completely unable to traverse the path of devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So it's interesting what so many people consider to be the, the ultimate in self-realization. Right? Here is kicked out as being a, a the severest obstruction to 
reviving one's eternal relationship with the Supreme. Tulsi Priyan. Um, Maharaj, I'm just wondering about that use of the word permanent because I think we've all heard stories of people who maybe were, you know, leaning towards impersonalism and then they become devotees um, or maybe they considered themselves full on impersonalists and they become devotees. So I'm just wondering, is it possible that, you know, it's permanent except if a devotee comes along again and you, you know, gives you the mercy and you, and then by that devotee's mercy alone, but under your own um, volition. You know, or, like, like Nitya Bhattha, permanently conditioned souls, but the permanently conditioned can become liberated. But it's the most severe disease. Mm -hmm. And as long as that disease is, is rampant, one can't engage in devotional service. You want to, uh, I don't want to serve, I want to be the Supreme. So as long as that's in my system, whereas the question of pure spontaneous love for Krishna, I want to be Krishna. Therefore, that was Prabhupada's question to Giriraj Maharaj when he first met Srila Prabhupada. Do you want to be God or do you want to become God? Which, 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 what are you looking for? To, to be God or to become God? And, uh, or rather to be God or to serve God? Uh, so fortunately, Giriraj Maharaj said that to, to serve God. Yes, Panchatattva Prabhu. Maharaj, we say that uh, if someone has liberated uh, by merging into the Supreme, and there are different, like, I don't know, manifestations of where that person can be liberated in the Supreme, uh, even as, as a monist and be in the, and still in the material body or something. And then there may be the position of a person who is merged into the Supreme, who has left his body behind and is in that, in that state. Wouldn't it be practically impossible for loving service to Krishna to be invoked because he's, he's in an unapproachable state? Yeah. <laughs> As you were speaking about that, I, I was thinking about people who make themselves psychologically unapproachable. You know, if you approach me about this, I'm not going to talk to you. Um, so they've made themselves absolutely unapproachable. You can't talk to me about uh, serving because there's no me to talk to. They've, uh, you don't talk to me about serving. Um, I, I don't exist. Uh, I've, I've annihilated my individual identity. That's how averse they are to serving. That's how averse they are to serving. Um, therefore, it's subtle atheism. It's the, the most uh, dangerous, quite the Vakrutan, the most dangerous kind of cheating religion is this impersonalism, which we think uh, is is something exalted, but no, it's uh, hellish. Is that all right? Yeah. Prabhupada yes, says, Mark. argument from the international scholar to me. We find in many places that Prabhupada claims permanent disappearance of loving Krishna, meaning one cannot fall from Sayuja Mukti, which is the meaning of liberation, meaning he does not fall from Brahma Jyoti, eternal peace. Else, what is the meaning of Mukti? I'm having a hard time following that. Let me see. Prabhupada claims permanent disappearance of loving Krishna, meaning one cannot fall from Sayuja Mukti, means one can't be elevated from Sayuja Mukti. Um, yeah, the, we grant that um, Sayuja Mukti may be in principle uh, eternal or, 
although one may fall down from that, in which case the, the question is, what is the meaning of mukti? Mukti that you think you've got isn't really mukti. What is that? I've been mixing two things together. Sorry. Mine is dead today. Abhishuddha uh, Bhutiya. Ruya Krishna Param Padam Tata. Patanchidho Nadrata Yusmad Angre. Yes. Twayasta Bhava Abhishuddha Bhutiya. Thank you. Um, so this is its liberation, but not really. Uh, we think of it as liberation, or we think of it as Vimukta. Uh, perfect liberation, but it's not. Uh, and what's the evidence that it's not? Uh, after going through so much trouble to get there, again, one can fall down. Uh, why? Anadrita uh, Yushmadangra, because um, they've neglected your lotus feet. The impersonalists. So, yes, essentially we are saying to the impersonalists that what is the meaning of your mukti? The meaning is lots and lots of trouble to attain a, an unconstitutional position, which is ultimately uh, not, a, not one of being resituated in your eternal position but of being removed from your eternal position or of suppressing your eternal nature. So then what is the meaning of mukti? Mukti uh, hitvanyata rupa sarupena vyavastati. The Bhagavatam says that mukti really consists of getting free from one's false identity and being situated in one's real identity. That's mukti. Uh, not this impersonal merging. Sarshati says, if it's Krishna's mercy to merge demons, he kills personally. Does this mean those demons wanted to give up individuality? Um, they may or may not have wanted to. Their immediate desire was to kill Krishna. Uh, that was their purpose. Um, to kill, kill Krishna or uh, oppose Krishna like Shushupal. But Krishna is so merciful that uh, he sees that somehow or other they're approaching me. All right, I'll give them something uh, better than they deserve. Uh, you could say they deserve to be, to be put down to the hellish regions of material um, existence, but instead I'm going to give them liberation. Um, so that's, yes, that's all right. Anything else? Maharaj? Yes? But if liberation is considered hellish by the devotees, then they are getting sent to a hellish region. Yeah, in that sense, but they're, uh, what can you say? Therefore, it's not, he's not giving them pure devotional service. Right. Kamsa and so on, they don't get that reward. But all right, you'll get uh, impersonal liberation, which the monists are struggling for with so much trouble. Okay. Prashabdena mokshabi santir api. The prefix pra in the verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, Tara Prochita, Pra Uchita, um, indicates that the desire for liberation is completely rejected. Purport. This was an annotation by Sridhar Swami, the great commentator on Srimad Bhagavatam. So Kaviraj Goswami is citing the authority Sridhar Swami. 
completely rejected. Prabhupada. Okay, anything else? In the... Krishna Bhaktir Badhaka Jata Shubha Shubha Karma Sheha Ek Jibir Again Tomo Dharma. All kinds of activities, both auspicious and inauspicious, that are detrimental to the discharge of transcendental loving service to Lord Sri Krishna are actions of the darkness of ignorance. Purport. The poetical comparison of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda to this is very significant. The living entities are spiritual sparks, and their constitutional position is to render devotional service to the Supreme Lord in full Krishna consciousness. So called pious activities and other ritualistic performances, pious or impious, as well as the desire to escape from material existence, are all considered to be coverings of these spiritual sparks. The living entities must get free from these superfluous coverings and fully engage in Krishna consciousness. The purpose of the appearance of Lord Chaitana and Lord Nityananda is to dispel the darkness of the soul. Before their appearance, all these superfluous activities of the living entities were covering Krishna consciousness. But after the appearance of these two brothers, people's hearts are becoming cleansed and they are again becoming situated in the real position of Krishna consciousness. The, this is the poetry of Kaviraj Goswami. He's compared Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu to the sun and moon and said that they dispel uh, darkness in the form of the ignorance of the uh, living entities. And particularly, uh, Krishna, Krishna Bahir Bhadak Jata Shubha Shubha Khan. Uh, the, we, we, we assume that impious activities are an instruction to Krishna consciousness, but pious activities also. Shubha Shubha Palayar Evam Mokshase Karma Vandana in the Bhagavad Gita. Both pious and impious activities are to be transcended because they're both entanglement. This, what is that? Twaite Padra Padra Gyan, E Mano Dharma, E Balue Mande Sambrahma. The Kaviraj Goswami says that this is just a mental concoction. This is good, this is bad. This is all rubbish. It's all mental concoction. Twaite, um, material world, Madra Badra Gyan. Uh, you know, he stole a diamond, I only stole a cucumber. So he's a big thief, I'm a small thief. You're thieves. Um, both of you. So this, mm, or Prabhupada's example of the dry stool and the wet stool, no, this is dry stool, this is good. Uh, so uh, pious activities are also kicked out. This is radical. Uh, there are many religious activities, religious systems, where practically the sum and substance is to be engaged in pious activities. If a person engages in what we call pious activities, 
charity, humanitarian activities, acts of kindness, truthfulness, and so on. If he has these good qualities, that's considered to be, wow, that's it. But here it's observed that this is also a distraction or an impediment to be pursuing pious activities as if they were a goal in themselves. The, so in that sense, pious activities are also a, an element of the darkness of ignorance. Any questions or comments about that? Yes, Tulsi Priya. Maharaj, um, you've spoken in the past about, you know, the idea of doing social welfare work, you know, like distributing food and things like that. And it just occurred to me, and maybe you can tell me if this is correct thinking or not. Um, it seems like a lot of times when people talk about the institution doing social welfare work, because, you know, for whatever PR reasons or you know, uh, because we don't want people to think that we're just callous to suffering. Um, it seems that usually when people want institutions to do social welfare work, it's because they themselves are not really doing so much themselves. And it just seems more convenient to have an institution that's doing it rather than if you see somebody hungry, you go to the, the trouble of, of helping them, which is- Well, what... that's true. That's not bad. Yeah. Uh, I want to do something good. I'm not able to do it personally. Um, so I, I give you money and say, please do this. Mm -hmm. That's not in itself bad. Um, you know, I'm working, I'm, I, I can't fly into this disaster place and distribute food or medicine or whatever it is, but you've set up a charity for that purpose. So I'll give money to your charity. That's what I can do. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing really inconsistent about that, but it's the whole idea that this charity is actually going to um, help people, but it's really going to meet mm -hmm. their needs. By the way, I, I take issue with the idea that our temples distribute um, prasadam for um, good publicity and so on. I think we've gone beyond that. Um, I think we've gone beyond, that was perhaps our initial motive. Um, the initial motive I don't think was that we have to help starving people. The initial motive was we need to rehabilitate, rehabilitate our reputation back in the terrible cult days and so on. Um, and so we established programs that people could admire uh, feeding the poor and uh, so on, uh, knowing that this is not really our business, but we're doing it because we have a crisis at hand or because we're, we need to uh, get out from under these cult labels and so on. But I think we've gone beyond that. I think we now believe that these are activities that really help people that these are activities we really should be performing, that Srila Prabhupada wanted us to do these things. I, I pointed that out early, many years ago in one of my seminars as sort of a, a further development of uh, this, how, how the direction these things go in. And I think we've, we've long ago reached that point where we, have persuaded ourselves that what we're doing is not only, is not merely something to impress people with, but we're really doing, uh, we're really helping people. We're, we're really, you know, we're, yeah, we're really doing something for people. Whereas in the 1970s, if someone asked us what we were doing to help people, we said, we're giving them knowledge, we're giving them transcendental understanding. Well, poo poo on that. That's what's that? What are you really doing to help people? No, we would argue this transcendental knowledge is the real need of uh, suffering human beings. But now 
we have a better position. Oh, we're, we're, we're feeding so many school kids a day. Uh, we're helping keep helping them stay in school. We're helping the victims of um, floods and droughts and um, political turmoil, war. And we believe it. Uh, so Tulsi Priya asks, mission drift. No, I think it's more than mission drift. I think it's, uh, I don't know what term to use, but yeah, at least drift. We're, uh, and what is mission drift? Sham Sundar Prabhu, um, the original Sham Sundar Das, told me one time that Prabhupada said that Krishna consciousness is like uh, a moonshot where the scientists are sending their their rockets to the moon. If you're just a little bit off, you go right past the moon. You know, if you're 1% off course or something, you fly right past the moon. So that, can that happen to us? Yes, it can. Sarsati asks, but accumulation of pious activities are precursor to becoming Krishna conscious. That verse is there, yesham tu antagatam papam, one has to come to the end of sinful activities, jananam punya karma, te dvandu. But though that punya karma that we need to accumulate, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur uh, explains, is bhakti sukriti. Not ordinary, not the ordinary sukriti obtained by planting trees or digging wells or giving cows in charity, but the result of doing something in relationship to devotees and devotional service. It means as common argument, what loss is there? At least the people are getting the prasad by which they can slowly be elevated, even if no holy names are being chanted. What loss, a great loss. That if we're diverted from performing our most important activities, that's a great loss. That's a great loss. And if instead of, you know, if I've come to distribute penicillin because there's some huge um, outbreak of some huge epidemic and I get distracted from that and started start repairing people's homes or distributing food I've, I've missed it you can say well I've done something good I, I helped people with their homes or I, I rescued a lost dog or whatever it was but I've now who's who's going to do my work of, of distributing the penicillin, which is the need, the real thing. Now that I've become distracted from that, um, my mission will will be uh, will fail. A little off, a little bit off as a uh, an example or, or sort of reverse. Um, when Hitler bombed Britain, his initial orders were that his planes should bomb the, the docks and the factories and the infrastructure, the airstrips, for example. That was his target. And his campaign was turning out extremely successful. Uh, a few days, you know, the, the, the airports had become um, inaccessible for launching uh, British air power. The docks, which were the crucial asset of, of Great Britain and its Navy and its merchant marine, were being destroyed. The factories were being destroyed. Just a, a couple more days of that. And... Hitler might have emerged victorious in uh, crippling and uh, conquering Great Britain. So Churchill devised a plan. He 
um, bombed Berlin, a civilian target, which was, you know, unethical. Uh, we, we would condemn uh, attacking civilian targets, you know, now today, oh, they're attacking civilian targets in Ukraine. So uh, he attacked a civilian target in, in Ukraine, in, sorry, in, in Berlin, uh, with the idea that Hitler would be so outraged that he would retaliate in kind and bomb London. And that's what happened. Uh, the bombing of London was a response to the bombing of Berlin. And the effect of it was that it gave the British a respite. It gave them relief from the bombing of their crucial infrastructure and allowed them to uh, recover and continue the war. So that diversion of Hitler's forces from its original mission arguably cost him victory over Great Britain. And it seemed to be entirely wa warranted. They've attacked our civilians, we'll attack their civilians. But the result was that he, he, he lost focus and lost the opportunity for victory. So similarly, if we become diverted to pious activities, humanitarian activities, um, spreading vegetarianism or peace and what have you, uh, then the, there can be a great loss. Haida says, others will cite the, no one should go hungry within 10 miles of an ISKCON center. Prabhupada quote, some programs are geared toward this. Baltimore's hunger free zone, for example. Uh, well, I don't know about Baltimore's hungry free zone. Let's start with Prabhupada's, no one within 10 miles. Um, that was in relationship to Mayapur. And in Mayapur, Srila Prabhupada did nothing to send out his forces in a 10 mile radius to distribute food to the hungry people. And in fact, when Jaya Patakamaraj had sent a, uh, a boat out after a typhoon and they distributed prasadam and got good publicity, and he reported that to Srila Prabhupada and asked if they should do that in the future, if there were such um, opportunities. Prabhupada said no. He, he said no, that we should distribute prasadam at our temple uh, or where we go for Sankirtan, not to the emergency place. In Mayapur, Prabhupada, those who've been to Mayapur and know what's now called the Sulab kitchen, that big uh, prasadam pavilion on the side of the road within our complex. Uh, that was constructed by Srila Prabhupada to distribute prasadam in, in grand scale. Uh, and Prabhupada said, everyone, anyone who comes, doesn't matter, they should all get prasadam, full prasadam. But, Prabhupada said, they should not be allowed to take anything out. Uh, he said, then they will mix it with their fish and it will become a parat. And perhaps you know there are turnstiles in that building, which I thought were installed to prevent people from rushing in. In fact, they were installed to, because Prabhupada gave the instruction that no one should take prasadam out they, as much as they want, they should have, but not taking any out. And Prabhupada said, you should check. You know, because the Bengali ladies under their cloth, they'll keep a tip and Prabhupada said, you should check. And the turnstiles were installed so that the devotees could check people as they left to make sure they weren't leaving with prasadam. This was told to me by Madhu Sevita Prabhu, who had checking as one of his duties. He was a brahmacharya in Mayapur at the time. So uh, how does that fit with the idea that Prabhupada wanted to send out his armies of prasadam distributors for a 10 mile radius? No, but at our temples, 
And Prabhupada liked, for example, the uh, golden temple uh, of the Sikhs in Amritsar because they had a program anytime people could come and get full prasad. And they had huge arrangements for uh, distributing food. So Prabhupada appreciated that and wanted us to um, follow that, emulate that really, uh, so that people could come to the Mayapur from two miles, five miles, 10 miles. Anyone who came, came would get full prasad. But not that our mission is to go around for 10 miles in every direction and distribute food. That's not our, our mission. But when we go distributing, when we go with Kirtan, let's see. Uh, Tulsi Priya says, I thought 10 mile rule is that people should come to the temple to eat. Yes. Or that we bring the whole package to the people, along with the prasad, books, Kirtan, and prasad. Yes. Um, rather along with the kirtan, we bring the prasad. We're offering the wor world a process after all. Yes, that's the thing. And as for a hunger-free zone, that's just a false advertisement. That's a false advertisement. I remember there was one uh, group, I've forgotten which strange group they were, you know, what, what, the, what our enemies called a cult and what we would agree with a cult. But they had some uh, gimmick really, that they were gonna rid the world of hunger in our lifetime. Maybe somebody remembers who they were, what they were, they're gone now, I think. There was a group called the Hunger Project and I think they were related to Est. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, the Hunger Project and it was related to what's now the forum and what was then called Est. And they were gonna rid the world of hunger in our lifetime. Instead, they rid, rid the world of themselves in our lifetime, practically speaking. Uh, they're not seen anymore. Yeah, the land, land my foundation, yes. Uh, so it was, it's, just, it's just a slogan. You can't rid the world of, of hunger. According to the laws of karma, there must be hunger. You can't stop it. You can't stop it. You can only make a slogan, we'll rid the world of hunger. Uh, in, in my childhood, they, they had a war on poverty. And poverty won. Poverty is still there. It's not that we had a war on poverty and wiped it out. Poverty is still present. So the... Uh, what is that in the Bible? The, um, one of the disciples was massaging the feet of Jesus Christ with an expensive ointment. And maybe it was Judas, someone complained. This, this ointment could have been sold and the money used for the poor. And Jesus replied, the poor you'll always have with you, but I'm only here for a few days. So the, the poor you'll always have with you. There were poor people in the times of Jesus. There are poor people now. There'll be poor people in the future. And there, there won't be a, a hunger-free zone, either in Baltimore or anyone else, anywhere else, by uh, mere distribution of food, sanctified or otherwise. Um, it's just a, it's a false advertisement. Uh, you might say it's uh, a, pre a pretense. Cheating. Yes. Okay. Part of my uh, ongoing rant on, on this topic, but thank you for the invitation. Prabhain Prabhu made a comment, I'm not sure if you answered it. Who made it? Prabhin Prabhu. Um, Prabhupada's words to be confirmed by his actions. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure exactly what you mean by that, but I think the point is clear that the quote, no one should go hungry within 10 miles, uh, is misapplied in the idea that this means that we should be going around to schools and orphan orphanages 
dumping off Prasad, which will uh, miraculously uh, transform people, free them from hunger. That's the most important thing. Keep them in school. That's very important. And then uh, give them a little uh, sliver of an opportunity for spiritual advancement. Uh, Prabhina asks, is there a book on food distribution coming up? I think you mean an anti-food distribution book. Uh, no, I'm not planning uh, a rant. I did a uh, seminar, you probably know, Food for Death. If someone wants to turn that into a book, I have no objection. I just don't have uh, the stamina for it at this point. But it would be a good book. The arguments are already there. Uh, Prabhu Das Oh, we're at five o'clock. Um, well, then we can uh, quit here. Should we have a little tear time and then let's uh, say goodbye? Hare Krishna. Kirtaniya Sada. Okay, you're on mute now. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare 
Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Hare Bol. Thank you, Gurudev. I think you're muted. <laughs> So I am. Thank you to the country. Thank you, country Tatra. Thank you all. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Jaya. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. 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 I, I was hearing uh, a tape by Srila Prabhupada the other day. Prabhupada was talking with a minister or priest in Melbourne. I think he was Episcopalian. And Prabhupada was explaining to him, just like a psychiatrist, he talks to the patient. He talks and talks to the patient. And gradually, the patient works out his misunderstandings, his misgivings, his problems. So similarly, the devotee, he gives transcendental knowledge. He talks and the person hears. And they get transcendental knowledge. And we've been blessed to hear such transcendental knowledge, soul lifting, inspirational, transcendental knowledge. Thank you very much. All right, Krishna. All for the Prabhupada's credit. Thank you so much. Jaya. <laughs>